years na ng tatiyan. Kaya hindi ko na start doing geo from basic. And we're gonna cover everything from basic and then hopefully go till complete quadrilateral in like two classes. Probably already begin, but yeah, let's start. Um, in this class, I like to, well, in this class, we will start with the most basic thing, build up the theory, and then go to fancy stuff, which are basically completing the quadrilateral and, you know, doing fancy stuff. We won't do any actual problems. Like, I'll be giving you guys problem set at the end of tomorrow's class, which is actually tomorrow 9 p.m. And then, actually, because tomorrow 9 p.m. class would be the last class, the problem set would be sort of like, the end and you guys can try problems from it it's they're gonna be like from various difficulty and yeah so we won't be doing actual problems today we're going to prove well-known properties and lemmas so yeah we're gonna start from very basic stuff because that is the main essence but we need to prove every single thing we assume we need to prove them so, is everybody fine with what I have said till now? I haven't said any technical thing. I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Also, let me know if, if my voice is like cracking or there's technical difficulties, etc. This is this one. <laughs> Do not laugh. Inscribe angle theorem. Anybody who can prove this? Or I should just assume that every single one of you like is comfortable with this. I don't want to call out people so like better respond. I don't mm. want to chat. I can prove it. Yes, go ahead Siddharth. Join OC. And then... Oh, okay. This is... Yeah, then like extended across. Like made it like extended beyond O. Okay. You want me to explain this? Then AO, then whatever that extension will be equal to OAC plus OCA. Mm. So that'll be twice OCA. And yep. similarly, the other one is twice OCB. Yeah, that's heavy. And then we have the cyclic quads. Basically, I hope you guys know the properties of cyclic quadrilaterals and inscript angle theorem. These are like the basic of Euclidean geometry. Next is this one. Uh, prove that angle BIC is 90 plus A by 2. Anyone who wants to prove this also? I know you guys can. I'll go ahead and prove it, I guess. Or should I wait for you guys? Like, yeah, think about it and yeah. It's pretty well known, but everybody says this is well known, but like nobody states the proof. So let's prove this. So we have triangle ABC and then ISD in central. And so you have to now prove that angle B, I, C is 90 plus angle A by 2. Anyone that wants to prove this? Uh, any solution? Okay, I'll prove it. All right. Also, wait, I'll wait for one more minute and then if nobody like wants to state the solution, then I'll state mine, which is essentially everybody's. But just feel free to explain your solution and feel good about it. Anyone? Oh, okay, so, I, yeah. I can see it, but... Go ahead, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. It's just angle sum property in BIC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, correct. See, 
such a short break. You guys, like, yeah, feel free to stay. I'll just write the detailed proof because why not? So we want to find angle PIC, which is essentially 180 minus the angle IBC minus angle ICB, which is essentially 180 minus angle B by 2 minus angle C by 2. 180 is 90 plus 90 minus B by 2 minus C by 2. And then 90 is basically A by 2 plus B by 2 plus C by 2. So you, those stuffs get cancelled and you get 90 plus A by 2. Simple. Okay. So we're moving on to the next level. And it's basically, you have to show that O and H are isogonal conjugates. Yeah, the spelling is correct. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my spelling is correct. So yeah. Prove that O and H are isogonal conjugates. So what are isogonal conjugates? So P and Q are isogonal conjugates if like, what do I try? It's hard to say. I'll just draw this diagram. If this is P and this is Q, then this angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. So yeah, we if the so you have to show that O and H are, are isogonal conjugates. Is everybody fine with the definition of isogonal conjugates? I'm like going fast because I'm pretty sure like many people are familiar with it. But if you're not, just let me know. I'll just explain it nicely. Right. So anybody uh, who wants to prove that O and H are isogonal conjugates? You essentially just like have to prove, um, where is it? You essentially just have to prove that OSC and angle, angle OSC and angle BH is like equal because once you once you prove that, it would be sim the proof is similar for showing angle HCA is equal to angle OCP. So yeah, anybody who wants to prove this? You can like give this angle BH is equal to angle CA or CAO by simple angle choosing. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll refrain from like using the word simple angle choosing because if they use the word simple angle choosing, almost every single lemma is like done. So anyways, yeah, that's how we go on that, which is nice. I'll just write. That is, we need to prove uh, that angle OSC is equal to angle BH. Because similarly, you can for prove like prove that HCA is equal to OCB. Right. And now note that angle BAH is now B H is 90 minus B. 90 minus angle B. And what is angle A O C? O is the circum center, by the way. H is the auto center. We know what's A O C by inscribed angle theorem. O C would be twice of angle B. And now since O A and O C are equal, so we have angle AOC as 180 minus angle AOC. Okay, sorry, this is OEC. OAC as 180 minus AOC by 2, which is 90 minus 2. Yeah, so basically what unlocks it. Well, now we go to another difficulty, which is H and the aortic triangle. This is actually a very important config because this would be used in proving the Blanchett theorem. That is like one of the most famous harmonic application theorem. So yeah, 
keep that in mind and use this as hint. However, let's prove this first. So basically, you have ABCD, ABC as the triangle, H as the ortho center, D, E, F as the foot of the altitude from the respective vertices. Now you have to prove that angle, uh, you have to prove that H is the in center of the ortho triangle, which is basically D, E, F. So essentially, you just have to prove that angle F, B, A is equal to angle A, B, E. Anybody who wants to prove this? I mean, yeah, it's easy, but if you have said a solution before, feel free to set, uh, like, tell one right now because it's completely fine. And yeah, be interactive because why not? There's no harm telling your solution to other people. Okay, I'll wait for one more minute and yeah. So basically, you have to show that angle FDA is equal to angle ABE. And since AB is perpendicular to BC, you use that thing and then we'll prove it. Just angle chasing. Hmm. Take it. I'll, I wait a sufficient amount of time. I'll go ahead and prove it. So we need to show that H is the in center. Okay, I think I made this spelling. In center is not this. In, in center is B E R of B E F. So we'll just show that we'll read that. Angle F D H is equal to angle H D E. So for this, note that angle F D H is equal to 90 minus angle F D B, right? Because A B is perpendicular to B C. Now what is F D B? Now since this is 90, like we have H F B 90, and we also have H D B 90. So we basically have H F B D cyclic. That's a cyclic quadrilateral. So angle F D B is essentially angle F H B. So 90 minus F D B is basically 90 minus F H B. Now we'll use the vertical opposite angles thingy. So since so FHB is equal to EHC. So 90 minus FHB would be 90 minus e, angle EHC. And again, since this is 90 and HEC is 90, so 90 minus EHC is 90 minus angle C. EHC is EBC. This is 90 minus angle EBC which is HDE. So yeah, this is, this was the key. Like these are more, like these problems, like essentially these are lemmas, which we are like solving as problem right now. These are like basic lemmas, which are quite useful in the long run. Like, and also they're like pretty cute for like proving them, so. Next one is also one of the most basic thing, which is reflecting the auto center. I think many people know it, and the proof is also quite cool. So anybody who wants to prove this, reflecting the auto center. So basically, you have A, B, C, and then you have H as the auto center. Now you have B as the foot of the altitude and M as the midpoint of the BC. Now, what this lemma says is when you reflect D, when you reflect H with respect to D, 
the point, the reflected point X would lie on the circle B, uh, circle ABC. Now, if you reflect H over the midpoint M and call this point as Y, the point Y would also lie on the circumcircle of ABC plus AY would be the diameter of the circle ABC. So anybody who you know wants to prove this lemma, like or if you want, I can skip the proof. Like if everybody is comfortable with it. I can just like write the proof and then skip it and then go to the next lemma. Should I you can skip say it? you can say simple angle chasing and skip. Oh, I'm not going to do that, but I'll write the proof then quickly so that everybody like is in, on the same page. Like that is the whole essence of me introducing basic stuff so that everybody is on the same page once we start with the complicated stuff. So yeah, let me write the proof. Um, the first part which I said is to prove that X lies on the circle ABC. For this basically, see, since you're reflecting H over D, you'll have HD equals to DX. You also have angle uh, HCB equal to angle BCX, but angle HCB is actually angle BAH and hence, we get X lying on the circle ABC. That's the truth. So I'll just write that out. Since HD is equal to DX, we have angle HCB equals to angle XCB, which is equal to angle XCB. But, but we have angle HCB, which is this one, is equal to angle PAD. Both are 90 minus B. This is also 90 minus B, and this one is also 90 minus B. So they are equal, which implies X belongs to the circling circle ABC. Similarly, um, okay, there's not this. The other proof is not similar to this proof. So anybody who would like to say why 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 the reflection of point H over the midpoint of BC lies on the circle ABC. Go ahead. Can I say why why lies on so <laughs> Yes. Go ahead. Okay, so BHCY is a parallel logo because yes. like yeah so then hbm is equal to mcy is equal to 90 minus c h bm is equal to mcy equals 90 minus c and h and hcm equals mby equals 90 minus b so then aby equals acy equals 90 so then it's like a cyclic word yep okay yeah that's actually correct um also just if you just want to show that Y lies on the circle ABC, just say that since AB, B, H, C, Y is, like, is a parallelogram, it's a parallelogram because you're reflecting over the midpoint of BC. That's also a very important lemma. Like, not lemma, but like a very important trick. Like, whenever you reflect over the midpoint of M, of BC, it, it's quite good. Like, keep in mind reflection over the midpoint is like so good. Spoilers, we're going to use this trick in proving Humpty Point's existence. Yeah. Um, so I'll write the proof, which I had in mind. Um, since BHCY is a parallelogram and a Angle BHC is 180 minus A because this is 90 minus. Uh, wait, 
sorry, this is 90 minus C and this is zero. How do we prove this? This is 90, yeah. This is 90 minus uh, C, this is 90 minus B. And so this would be 180 minus 90 minus B, 9 plus 90 minus C. So that would be B plus C, which is 180 minus C. Yeah. So since angle B at C is 180 minus A, angle B Y C is 180 minus A, which implies Y belongs to the circle A to C. And if you want to prove that A Y is the diameter, just show that. Uh, just show that angle A C Y is 90, which is an exercise. So try it. Hopefully. You guys have probably done this before, so yeah, every everybody's clear with what I have done till now. To react or say something or write something. Until one person says yes, I'll I want to go to the next one. Yes. Yeah, nice. Thank you, Anurag. Um next is a very cute and must remember lemma, probably the first lemma you learned in your like, like geometry Olympiadic, Olympiad geometrics. No, uh, that's enough introduction. This this person doesn't deserve much introduction. Yeah, the incentive excellent lemma. Yeah, how many of you people call this as fact five? And how many call this as um, in center x center lemma? Let's let's make a poll. I I, actually I just like to, to say well known lemma. Oh, <laughs> okay. Asahi Um, should I take a poll for this? No. Okay. 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 I was just very curious. Now I'm gonna take a poll for this. Mm. Why is making poll hard? Oh, it's not. What do you call this? This lemma as choice one, back I, choice two, in centered, x centered lemma. How do I launch the poll? Oh, 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 yeah, done. Yeah, let's see. Siddharth, you can't do it. How do people remember fact five? I just forgot even the lemma name. Huh? Okay, wow. Well. Sad, it, I can't do it. Oh, you can't. What do you want to do? In center, X center. Okay. Everybody said it as in center, X center. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, people call it so fancy, fancy names. Actually, it started with Evan saying in center, X center. Like, uh, saying fact five. I don't know how it started, like, being called fact five. And if this is fact five, what is fact one, two, and three, and four? Mystery. We need to solve this. Okay, back to the class. Anybody who would like to prove this? It's a very simple fact, right? Like, it's a very simple lemma. I'll explain it still. So you have the triangle ABC. You have IRC in center. Um, MA, which is over here. Oh, God, this is not the right color. This is MA. This this is called M subscript A, okay, and this is I A. So what in center x center lemma says is this midpoint of arc B C, which we call as M A, is the center of the circle, of, which contains B the point B, I C, and also the x center I A. Yeah, I'll. It's a very well known problem. Six out of six people voted. I want one of the person to say 
like tell the proof i am not going to tell the proof you guys will tell the proof because we have good amount of time so yeah anybody who wants to volunteer and say the proof of that right no one fine just let I'll prove least... ma b is equal to ma c is equal to ma a yeah and how do you prove that angle you essentially want to prove m a is the second center yes yes right i forgot that angle chase in exists in fact what we did till now in the class was not angle chase thank you anubhav um welcome <laughs> okay so we basically have the proof you know this guy that n e is the circum center see i gave you guys the first hint ha huh? i'm not going to prove this you guys are going to prove this so tell the proof how do you prove m a is the circum center of i b c should i say yeah 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 go ahead okay so m a i b equals a by 2 plus b by 2 m a i b and m a b c equals a by 2 So then, M A B I is equal to A by two plus B by two. And so then, M A B I is isosceles, and M A B equals M A I. Yep. We got M A B I uh, as isosceles triangle, and similarly, you will get M A I C as isosceles triangle, and yeah. That's how you prove that M A is the circum center of I B C. Now, it's it's okay. It's since I A is the x center, I is the n center. It's I should not use this word, but it's quite easy to see that I B I A is ninety degree. Yeah, because I'm not gonna explain this at least. I just put it to this way. Okay, yeah. So I B I A and I C I A both the nineties. Hence I B I A C is a psychic quadrilateral. You got the you got that M A is the circum center of I B C. Hence M A is the circum center of I B C I A. Yeah. So that's my center X center. Yeah. Next is Michael point for a triangle. Oh wait, everybody is fine with the proof, right? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Um. Okay, so next is Michael point for a triangle, not a quadrilateral. When I was small, which implies when I was in grade ten, I was reading it more. And I was like, there's two middle points. One is middle point for quadrilateral, and one is middle point for triangle. And I always used to be like, why did Evan repeat middle point? Then today, actually today itself, I realized that this is middle point for triangle, and that is for quadrilateral. Anyways, what this lemma says, this is also very important. It's like very useful, not important, useful, and easy to memorize or remember or whatever to be used. Um. So if you have uh, three random points like on the line, so like if you have point B, oh, oh God, how did I? Okay, okay, never mind. Uh, so you have A B C as the triangle. B F E are the are points lying on the line A B B C C A line, not segment line. So then the this lemma. Which is essentially sort of similar to how you prove the Simpson's line existence. So, it says that 
B circumcircle of ABE, B, BDF, and CEF, these three concur at the point X. Yeah. Next lemma, which is the tangent line lemma. This actually, how many people know the proof of this lemma? Tangent line lemma. It's quite we have used it so many times. Like almost every ISL G1 and G2 uses this lemma. I'm just kidding. Probably. Like most of the it does it. It doesn't? Okay. It's been used since I saw the ISLs. I think six months. Okay. Yeah. Um does anybody wants to prove this? Like anybody wants to prove this tangent line lemma? No one? Okay, then this is your homework. Try it because actually even I was curious like what was the proof and then I proved it on my own. Simpson line, if you have attended Rohan's geometry classes, he basically just proves Simpson. Simpson line every time. Next is your famous angle bisector lemma, which also comes in NCRT grade 10 textbook. So, anybody who wants to prove this angle bisector lemma would be a good practice for school exams. So, let's try it. Sadly, I am in class 11. Um, anybody who wants to volunteer and like Tell the proof for the angle bisector lemma. Wow. Okay, go ahead. Can. Can. Okay. So then draw BE parallel to AD. Done. And then join. Yeah. And okay. so then you get that BAE is isosceles hmm. because ABE is equal to yes. BAD and BEA is equal to DAC. So then we get that AE is equal to AB. And, and what, which, however you call this, but then we'll have AC by um, AE is equal to CD by BD. But then AE is basically AB, so you'll have AC by AB is equal to CD by BD. This was your proof, right? So, yes. Yeah, my God said we're so close. Make a point E such that BE is parallel to AD and E belongs to AC. If you guys can't understand my handwriting, just, just question me. I have a very trashy handwriting. Sorry for that. Yeah. Next is we have a ratio lemma. It's not there in MO, it's there in analogy. So I think many people don't know the proof or the existence of the lemma, but it is very useful. Very useful. Um, I'll state the statement for what this lemma says. This lemma says that if you have a point, you have triangle ABC, you have a point D on which, which is on this line BC, and prove that it's quite useful when you, you know, you want lens in terms of science. Like it's quite nice. You have DB by BC is AB by AC in the sine D and the AB by sine DC. In fact, we can use the same, you know, we can actually overkill angle bisector lemma using ratio lemma. Because you have the DAB equals to DAC, so that gets cancelled and you get DB by DC equals to AB by AC. Yes, we overkilled angle bisector lemma. So good. Anyways, uh, anybody who wants to prove this, actually try it. Because I'm, I we know can do it by science law. Yes, good job on that. Would you like to explain where are you applying triangle? Like which triangles? It's uh, triangle ABD and triangle ACD. 
I didn't hear what you what you said. Triangle ABD and triangle ACD. Yes, correct. Um, I'll that is very better. Other people, are you? Did you get why this follows? Like after you apply sign rule on triangle ABD and ADC, you're done. So I'll just write the proof and yeah. Basically, when you apply sign rule on ABD, you get AB. Let me write it out nicely. So in triangle ABD, you apply the sign rule. Yeah, I I am really sorry. I have a habit of like writing full proof. Like I can't survive if I don't write full proof, and which is like detailed. In fact, if you go through my previous post, every solution of mine is very detailed. So I rarely fix them, except the shading in P thirteen. It's a fix all, and I still haven't deleted it. Anyways, so we use the sign rule. So AB by ADB is equal to DB. We want DB, right? We want a sign rule. So shall we get AB and DB and some sign stuffs, which we think will manage it out. Another claims that we can, and we believe. Another also, AB by sine ADB, which is this one, and this one, and DB by sine BAD. Similarly, we use sine rule on triangle ABC. We get. AC. So we want sine rule in terms of AC and DC. Okay. Sine ABC is equal to AC by sine DC. But look at this. Sine ADB and sine ADC are same because sine X is equal to sine one eighty minus six. That is also yeah. These sign rules you should memorize them. Like remember them. These are actually right. Quite nice. Both helpful in your school and your own grammars and J. But I didn't do J. So. So you have sine ADC equals to sine ADB. Now, this let's divide the equation one and equation two. Because I think now they're actually cutting out and giving us exactly what we want. And when we divide, we get DB by DC, and then we simplify, and you get the above equation. I'll just complete it out for the sake of completion. Right. Sign DC. Yep. So, good job, Emma. Yeah, so we have gone through a lot of lemmas. We still have a few more lemmas left. Actually, a lot more lemmas left. Oh my God, this is such a nice lemma. If 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 a person, okay, so everybody can see the screen, right? This is such a nice lemma. Like, keep this in mind. The existence of this lemma. Now. Uh, anybody who wants to prove this, it's it's like literally one line, not even one line, one word. Okay, two words. Let me count. Yeah, three words. Basically, three words. Anybody who wants to say the two? Actually, three letters. Better. One. P O P. <laughs> yes, it is P O P. We didn't use any P O P before, which is sad. And I wanted to like state how useful P O P is. Yeah, it's basically P O P. Oh, I want this color. The proof. Um. M belongs. Oh, can you say the proof? 
all of the statements. We have two circles. Capital Omega and small Omega. And then these A and B are the intersecting points. D and E uh, are the, is the common tangent, which touches both the small Omega and the big Omega circle. And then what you do is you consider the intersection of AB and the E and call it M. So now this M would be the mid, uh, midpoint of the E. Yeah, this is the statement. And what Siddharth says is we'll use radical axis. So M lies on the radical axis of omega and small big omega and omega. And hence, what we get, we get that M A, we get that M B square is equal to M A into M B, which is equal to M A square, which implies M B square is equal to M A square, which implies M B is equal to M A. Right. So, this was our two circles, common cards, and boom lemma. I actually forgot the name of this lemma, so I just made it up myself. Thank you. I have such a nice creativity. Yeah, butterfly theorem. The people who attended my project of geo class probably remember the proof. And I asked them. So, yeah, because and Anurag, you were there in Atul's class too when the project of geo was going on. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I'll state the statement and I'll give you guys a good two minutes to think about it. Or three, actually three, four, 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 four is nice. So basically what's happening is you have a, you have chord AB and the midpoint M. So M is the midpoint it's given. Now you have two more chords, ZW and YX, which also pass through M. Now what you do is you con you consider the intersection ZX with AB and call it B. Consider the intersection YW with the chord AB and call it Q. Now prove that PM is equal to MQ. That is the statement. And uh, I'll, it's it's not a normal problem. It requires projective jump. So we need to give projective so solution or any other solution. So we need to give like projective solution or another solution. Yeah, projective because the another solution is actually wrong. Oh, but it uh, isn't it in uh, ABG or this? Yeah, it's like dropping the perpendiculars, no? Hmm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Let's do the projector one because the projector one is like dark magic. Um okay. Everybody think for it for a good one or two minutes and I'll fill in write a few hints if you guys need it. So the first hint would be prove that A. Actually, no, think about it. Um, but like till 9.55, that is for three minutes, think about it. And then I'll say the proof. Till then, if you have any doubts, do let me know. We have a random man. Yeah. And then we have the other configuration. Siddharth, do you remember the proof? Like, you know the proof of the butterfly theorem? I think so. Okay. Then I'll ask you to prove it. It's fine. Okay, I'll say no. No, 
actually three, like two main steps. One, projection. Two, uh, completing, finishing out with adding one to both the sides, which is also very, very cool technique. So, yeah, this was butterfly theory. Ooh, okay, thanks. Next is a very famous configuration. Um, oh, any doubts, by the way? Because I use harmonic bundles no not harmonic bundles i use uh harmonic chase for any doubts signal okay no one no doubts next is the iran demo yeah does anybody know what is iran demo or should i like introduce it and say the statement which is it and just I today said it, I forgot it. Never but, so. so basically, the Iran Lema says that if you have like uh, a triangle ABC, the in center I, D, E, F are the touch points, M and N are the midpoints of BC and AC, then it says that M, E, B I M N conquer at point K. Yeah, this is the statement. And additionally, you also get some cyclic stuff like this. Where is my cursor? Yeah, take that. Um, this was in Egmo, I guess. This concurrency point K, it's cyclic with B I E. Yeah. So maybe so. See, this is a config geometry. You can see like what what's the best thing about configs is you can see a lot of stuffs happening, and then you can use some of the few stuffs to prove the other stuffs. So right now, you can you have to prove that F E B I and M N conquer, but it's like too difficult at first. But what is easy to prove is proving by de uh, defining k, so you define k as Fe cap Bi. What is easy to prove is proving k belongs to the circle I, E, B, C. And once we are done proving that, then we'll prove that. Then what we'll get? We'll get that. I, K, C is 90 degree. And we'll somehow use that to prove that M, N is M, N, and K are collinear. That's the whole strategy to prove F, E, B, I, and M, N conquering at the point K. So the first stage is to prove that K belongs to the I, the circumcircle of I, E, B, C where you define k as f e cap p i any ideas how we prove this uh anybody who has actually seen this configuration i've seen it in egg book not called uh, not. Not it's not called no? i don't think it, it, it is this lemma it was just a random is it called a random okay maybe it is no no it isn't it is not. What is it? I'm pretty sure. Let me search it up. It on the more. It's the Iran TST 2019, right? Yes. Yeah. And I died on this roof. I remember I left it. Is it? Oh, you use this to prove it on them. This yeah. is the right thing. Yeah, you use this to prove it on them. What nonsense. Oh, never mind. Uh, Anurag, you died on this proof or you died on like? I died on this only. Ooh, okay, so try it out. We'll wait for Anurag to prove it. Don't mind them, you know. Yeah. 
What is M and defined to be? So we want to prove that we so we defined K as F. What is right? M and defined and now, to be? I'm asking this. Okay. At all. Yeah, I'm not. What is M and defined to be? I'm asking this. Oh, oh, midpoint. Come on, M and M are like the matlab, very known names for midpoints. But okay, okay, okay. So, how do we prove K lies on the circle I E T C? Through that angle BKD is equal to uh, C by two, then we will be done. Angle B. BKD is equal to C by two. Hmm. Can you get it? Can you get angle BKD? Right. You want this as C by two. Like if we prove this is C by two, then we will be done. We already know what is this. This is B by two. The only problem is how will we get this angle? This angle is like ninety plus angle I D K. So, you can you find this angle B D B K? Uh, what? Can you find the angle B D K? B D K, okay. Mm -hmm. Can you? It will be equal to angle P F K, I guess, because like D is reflection of F. Wow, that's actually smart. Yeah. Okay. And you're done. This is correct, actually. So first, note that B I is the perpendicular. Why am I writing over here? If I have like so much space, um, oh. so this is an analog proof. First part. Note that P I is the perpendicular bisector. P Q. I take time to write, okay? I'm sorry. Okay. Which implies angle um, BFK is equal to angle BDK. Everybody is fine with this? Now what Anurag is saying is, note that, so, what is, by the way, what is BFK, anyone? And now what is angle BFK? Mm. Angle BBK is basically um, 180 minus AFE. And what is um, AFE? 90 minus A by 2, if I'm not wrong. So this is 90 plus A by 2. Now, uh, so angle B, K, D is equal to C by 2. Because this is already B by 2, this is 90 plus A by 2. And hence, angle B, K, D is C by 2. Which implies angle I, K D is equal to C by 2, which implies K belongs to the circle I E T C. Yay! We did the first part, which is very nice. Now the second part. To prove K belongs to M. This is configuration here. Phantom points are also the most important thing. So yeah. 
So we want to show that. Okay. So like we can get a contradiction by phantom points, right? They like consider k dash to be in uh, intersection of b i into like m n into the cyclic quarter related. So by that we are like uh, like consider k dash to be uh, intersection of m n into the cyclic quarter related cyclic uh, a circle. So you consider yeah. m n as k dash is equal to m n cap t cyclic quarter related. Uh, I D C. IEDC. Hmm. So, like so, we know that angle IK dash D is equal to oh, C by 2 by angle 3. Angle IK dash D is equal to C by 2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, angle IK dash D is equal to C by 2. How do you know that? Because, like angle 3, you know, take ID2 with the segment you get at IK dash D is equal to C by 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which okay. implies like I K, uh, okay. I, K and B are collinear. Wait, hold on. How, you define K dash as M N cap I E D C. Yes. Right. Yes. So how do you have K dash lying on the line B I? Oh, I don't have like take angle IK dash T. So it will be C by 2. IK dash T. IK dash T. Yes. Red C by 2. Um, um, yeah, that is C by 2. But you don't have BK DS C by 2. So BK like uh, angle DKI is equal to C by 2 and angle DKB, uh, DK dash I is equal to C by 2 and DK B is equal to C by 2. Wait, what? Yeah, you have to explain that. Yeah, it's okay. You don't, you don't assume K dash, but rather, well, that's a good direction. You assume M or N to be the phantom point and not K dash. Okay. So, do you, should I wait for you, Anura? Do you want to think? No, no, you can continue. So you basically take n dash is equal to um, km cap dc. Right. So you take n dash is equal to km cap dc, km intersection ac. And now your goal is to prove km, see, m, m, n, k, See, if the statement is true, what the statement wants to tell is M and K is a line parallel to AB. Now what you're saying is, now we'll assume KM is uh, KM intersects AC at N and dash. And now we're just going to say that M and dash is parallel to AB. Yeah. So what we want to show is enough to show mk is parallel to ab or you want to show that angle kmc is equal to angle abc yeah okay so i gave you a hint so think about it what do we want to prove right now angle abc is B. So you want to show that angle KMC is B. How will you get angle KMC is B? Any ideas, anyone? Oh, I want to do something in the chat. Unrelated, unproductive contribution. By some random number. Or aunties. Uh, I never use by some random number. I actually don't. Actually, I've never used by this famous number. Ah. I see. Anybody who wants to finish this up? Or should I continue? Did I really like to finish it up? 
Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know the Finnish word. Maybe. Let me see. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it then. I'll give you a hint. M is the midpoint of the right angle triangle. Yeah, we need BM equals M K equals M C. Yeah, we have one. We already have K B K C as ninety degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant we have. Yeah. Do you not see why? Because we all. Yeah. So I'll write that down. Note that since um, K belongs to I E B C implies angle B K C is ninety. Which implies BM is equal to MK is equal to MC, and we use the fact that BM is equal to MK. Now you guys finish it up. I'm not going to say the proof. I'm not going to finish it up. You guys will finish it up. So yeah, BM is equal to MK, and you want to prove that angle K MC is angle B. You don't even need a function for it. Why? Why did I take this function step? You just have to show M K is parallel to it. Yeah, we just have this because this time B K M is B by two. So anybody who wants, I'll go ahead to set up. B K M is B by two. Yep. So then M K C is ninety minus B by two, and K C M is ninety minus B by two. So then K M C is B. Correct. Yeah. And hence we run. We finish it up. So we got M K is parallel to A B, and hence, but then but we have M N parallel to A B, so we get N lying on K M I. Yeah, but we got F E B I M N conquering at point K. Everybody is clear with this proof? Anurag, Siddharth, Ishan, Aditya, Arun. Music. The audience, but yeah. If I get one guess, I'll go ahead. Else, I'll stay here. And yes. The proof. Should I repeat the proof? Mm. Uh, I'll answer yes in chat. Oh, yay! I'll say yes in chat. Thank you. Last, I I wanted to con continue and can. Okay, yeah, we'll go to one. We'll complete one Humpty point configuration, then continue the rest in the next class. This theorem. It's quite a nice theorem. It's not that useful, but it's a very nice configuration. So, not not that famous, but it does come up often. So hence I chose this. It's called the Blanchet theorem. Blanchet. I'll I'll say the statement to the people who don't know. It says we have a triangle ABC. Now, uh, why is the fit of the altitude from A onto BC? P is a random point on the segment. I think it's a only segment. I'm not sure. Let's consider it as segment as of now. So P is a random point on the segment AY. And then you consider the intersection of AP, uh, CP with AB and BP, the intersection with AC. Call it Z and X respectively. Now the Blanchet theorem states that Z, that and um, that the the line AY is the angle bisector of ZYX. So in other words. Show that angle Z Y A is equal to angle A Y X. That's the Blanchet theorem. I'll give you guys a good three minutes to think about it, and then we'll start discussing. Hint: It's projective geometry. Mark it. Out. I see another. Yeah. So, 
the Savians. That's like, think about it. Seven okay, movies. can I tell the proof? Oh, wow, you're done? Wow, no, I'm not Extend, so extend it, Zed. Uh, so you want me to extend ZX? Yes, and intersect DC. Okay. What do you want me to call this as? Call it as J. No, T. Okay, fine, Jay. And call that angle bisector and ZX intersection to be K. Ooh, so, okay. Okay. so we need to prove that JK, uh, JK, ZX is and harmonic bundle. Bundle, yeah. Yes. Like oh, we project for this? Yes. So okay. like now we project from A. Now you project from A. Yes. So in, okay. yes. Yep. Yeah, that's it. You're done, no? Yes. So I'll, I'll repeat the proof which uh, Anurag said, which is very nice proof. I'll call it Anurag's proof, which is essentially my proof, but I'll still call it Anurag's proof because Anurag said it. So what you do is you consider the intersection ZX and the intersection of ZX and BC, call it as J. Then you consider the intersection of AY and ZX, call it as K. Now, firstly, by the Savian's uh, inducing quadrilateral lemma, which again, if you don't know, it's there in the harmonic chase handout, which I need today to check it out, which uh, basically says that you have J, Y, B, C equals to minus one. Now we project this from A onto the line ZX and we get J going to J, B will come to, uh, oh, Y will come to K, uh, B would go to Z, C would go to X, and this is minus one. Now we also have this 90 degree. J angle, so note that angle J Y K is equal to 90 degree, which implies, see, we already have this uh, as minus one, the harmonic, we have this harmonic under, we also have 90 degree. What's the most obvious lemma we use? The harmonic bundle angle bisector lemma, which is quite well known. And it's, yeah, so we get that um, ZYK is equal to angle KYX. And we're done. This was the proof of Blanchett theorem. It was pretty cool. So, but yeah. wait, how was like the cross ratio JYBC equal to minus and I forgot again? Oh, should I prove this? JYBC. Hmm. I think the proof was actually it Seva Menelis. I didn't remember. Yes, it is Seva Menelis. Yes, yes. Yeah. it is Seva Menelis. You can also do it yeah. by projecting at A then projecting at P. Yes, yes, yes. The the nicer proof, obviously. There's a nicer proof, but. It's basically Seva Menelis. Which proof do you want, Anura? Do you want the nicer proof or the proof? I like I know the Seva Menelis proof. You can do it by another way. Okay, I will we'll do both. Siddharth, would you like to say your proof? Okay, so um, JYBC is J -Y -B -C. equal to... Once you project it A, you get that it's equal to JKZX. Mm -hmm. And then projecting it P, you get that this is JYCB. But this is the projective proof of Seva Menelis. No, this yeah. is the proof that it's negative one. Because it's like one this by is actually itself. called a Seva Menelis. Yes. It's like, no, it was also projective. I mean, this was used as a projective proof of Seva Menelis. Yeah. Yes. This is this 
uh, and the other proof was basically first using savers on which triangle and see what in this one. Uh, where do we use it? So we use savers on J, Z, and X. And then we use Menelis on, uh, oh, sorry, we use Menelis on Z, uh, J, Z, and X, and we use savers on this triangle with P. And you finish it off if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Should I should I work it out? Do you guys want me to work to work it out? No legs is close it. enough. The cup. Yes. Okay. Check out the handle. Anyways, oh okay. So this was not yeah, we have one more um lemma to discuss configuration which i'll just say right now so i'll draw i plan to use gdb for this but then i don't want to because i don't want to change the tab and stuff it's quite hard to do that so i'll just see uh so we have abc we also have the midpoint n how do you make midpoints? Midpoints are so hard. Why do they even exist? Okay. I don't mind. By the way, nobody complimented my notes. That looks nice, huh? Okay. Um, now we'll like make the author center. the author center. Now we'll uh, start with we'll, we start with one property of this configuration which is the Humpty point configuration. We'll do one property. Tomorrow we'll do uh, another property and then we'll go to the completing the configuration of this orthic triangle. This is the name of the configuration. So what this says is you drop the perpendicular from H to the median, AM. So you drop the uh, perpendicular. This is called Q. Right. So now what, uh, okay, you drop the, hold on, yeah. So you drop the perpendicular from, like you, you drop the foot, Whatever. <laughs> Consider the point Q such that HQ is perpendicular to AM. Now, this HM point configuration says that BH. In other words, like, yes, this is cyclic. They would be cyclic. Yeah. Anybody? So, yeah. BHQC would be cyclic. This is the implication. So prove that B H Q C is cyclic. And this point Q is the HM point. And this HM point has so many properties. I'm pretty sure you might you guys yeah. You guys must have attended the class of Malay, like Malay's class. Class by Malay. That's passive. Um, our Malay's class. So he talked about HM and Dumpty points. So, by the way, Dumpty point is the isogonal conjugate of HM point, and it also has surprisingly many properties. And if you guys would have like attended uh, Ananda's class, which was on spiral similarity, you guys have learned about Dumpty points. Anyways, anybody who wants to try to prove this or any progress. Um, Siddharth, Anurag, Ishan, Aditya, do you guys like know the proof of this already? Do not know the proof already. You don't know. Okay. Okay, then try it out for a good 
one or two minutes. So, by the way, we already know. So let's write. Let's 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 progress it together because I also don't happen to remember the proof nicely. So we know that angle BHQ is one eight, not BHQ, so BHC. That is one eighty minus A. So you take you want B Q C to be one eighty minus A. Hmm, interesting. You know what's more interesting? That I should think about it. So if I reflect points, if I reflect some point. I'm saying to like reflect Q about M and you'll see that Q dash lies on the circle. Hmm. But like because it M is the center, so it will lie. No, no. Yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. M is not the center. Yes, center then. How about you reflect some other point? Let's see. See, you can reflect H over them. Uh, you can reflect H over them, which also has quite good properties. Because if you reflect H over them, then that point, the reflection of H, so call it H dash, would lie on the circle ABC. But also, if you reflect Q over them, uh, that would also lie on the circle ABC. By the way, if you guys attended the harmonic chasing well of loss, we actually had a very cool property regarding this, which I actually did in, the, in that class. Anyways, that's not the point. We, what would happen if I reflect A over M, not Q or H, but A? Well, since you're reflecting A, you'll get a parallelogram. So, should I reflect A over M? Yes. Oh, HQM is 90. Yeah, it's given to me. It's reflected. This looks good. It doesn't look like a parallel look at Doesn't matter actually. Let's call this point A dash. Now what will happen? This angle, since uh, we got A, B, A dash, C as a parallelogram. Since this angle is A, this angle would also be A. We knew this one, this angle was 180 minus A. So what do we have? We get H, B, A dash, C as cyclic quadrilateral. So it's enough to show that. B, Q, C, A dash, H is cyclic. In fact, if we can show that. Okay, no, now now you guys reduce it out. We have 90. Like if we put that angle H, C, A dash is equal to 90, then hello. Yeah, go ahead. So now we, are, uh, we had like angle hcb is equal to 90 minus b yeah hcb is, is equal to 90 minus b yes and angle a, a dash cb is equal to b so we are like mm -hmm. angle hc a dash is equal to 90. yep and you are like angle hq a dash is equal to 90. and you're done and you're done yes yes so you got hq b c a dash c on a cyclic so you got the H, the outer center, B, C, and the Humpty point. Uh, cyclic. This was the first nice configuration we probably did in the class. Any doubts, anyone? I guess not. Did you get it? On Siddharth and Yes. Yes. Okay. That was it for today's class. I'll take a part two tomorrow where we'll complete the configuration of Humpty. 
and the auto center and also do the shaki devil point shaki devil it's it's called it's called in center configuration but we'll, we'll call it shaki devil lemon because it was once popularly known as that really i i don't know like this uh, the seniors used to call it as sharky devil like my seniors right now i am in class well. when i was in grade eight people used to call it sharky devil yeah anyways uh let's stop recording <laughs>